Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to this show today. Now it is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for the day, we have the IRS checking in, let us know about the frustrating tax season ahead. We have some more interesting tidbits about the Chase Inc. Premier card coming out, some changes to some bonuses that have been around for a while that you need to be aware of, and we'll close with banks actually potentially being nice. You'll get my thoughts on that and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button let's get to work now first things first it is the start of a new year that means it's time to start getting ready for tax time so the irs today is checking in with a quick reminder they want you to know about tax season so what we have here is the irs is saying tax season will officially start on january 24th of this year you know now overall many not many of us are going to be ready in january 24th but just be aware of the start date and then interestingly enough for all my crypto fans out there the irs it seems like will be asking about cryptocurrency this time around now in other news that isn't too surprising the irs also says that this tax season may actually be frustrating or I guess more frustrating than recent ones due to a lot of the delays, pandemic, staff shortages, and all of that. Um, you know, anytime a government says they're already terrible, government process is going to be even more terrible than it usually is during normal times. That's never a good sign. But hey, so with that being said, just be aware of that. Now, I will be doing two videos about taxes by popular demand. So number one is going to be a video focused on what is taxable versus not taxable in this world of credit cards that we live in. And then the other one will be about how to potentially pay your taxes with a credit card. Of course, the strategy you might want to implement. I'm going to do two separate videos so we don't overcomplicate things in one. Um, I'm probably taping that right after this actually. So look out for those in the coming weeks. But without that, with that aside, let's move on from the government and get into it. Now we're here, we're going to talk about Chase to of course satisfy the House of Diamond. Now this time I've been following the uh, the Ink Premier card very closely. It's interesting to me and we have some additional details. So let's take a look at that. Now last time on the show, we talked about when the Ink Premier would come out. Early February launch, there's a countdown on their site. But the new information and the new rumor here is that the Ink Premier will include Pay Yourself Back feature. So if you're unfamiliar, Pay Yourself Back is a feature that Chase has introduced maybe in mid-2020 and kept around for quite some time that, you know, instead of having to redeem your points through the travel portal to get a, a specific boost in the case of like a Sapphire Preferred, for example, 25% points boost through the portal. They've allowed you to redeem points towards specific purchase categories on your card. So how this is going to work for the Ink Premier looks like from the launch date, at least through March of that, this same year. So about a month and a half, give or take, you're going to have some business focused categories. So we have internet, cable, and phone purchases. Now the boost here is going to be 10%. So you know you could think of instead of earning like one point, you're earning 1.1x back if you're going to redeem it that way. Now of course you're going to have to make that purchase on your Ink Premier card. In other news in the Ink Premier, more so some insights, if you will. So someone who watches the show, I didn't get permission to use your name, so I won't, but reached out in the comments. They said, hey, I've been talking to my Chase banker about the Ink Premier, and it's looking like that Chase internally is considering this a card targeted at folks, real, real businesses with lots of spend, in the millions of dollars worth of spend, which again, fits the fits what they're doing with the card. It's kind of like a warehouse line of sorts in your pocket the 2% or the 2.5x back, depending on how the price breaks. But more importantly to me, that also kind of speaks to why this card is not included in the trifecta. Because again, all the cards are linked in the trifecta, business and personal. So you can see if in Chase's mind, if they are in fact looking at folks who are spending millions of dollars, it's not reasonable to assume most of those purchases will be 5K plus, enabling that 2.5%. Then you could do so much damage with a Sapphire Reserve, even an Ink Preferred or a Sapphire Preferred card with those points boosts we just talked about. So there are some insights there. Again, I'm thinking about picking this one up for different reasons. It will end up being a separate video if I go through with it, but there you go. 
Now, continuing on with the House of Diamond really quick here, if you are not an Ink Premier fan, but you have some existing Chase cards, well, then Chase is sending out some very interesting targeted bonuses that you could be eligible for, and this is on a card-by-card -card basis. So a lot of you out there have multiple Chase cards. This could apply to multiple of the cards. So let's take a look at some examples. So these are basically Chase spending bonuses. So we've seen targeted offers coming through January 15th through the end of March, basically. So some examples that folks have seen here are going to be 5x back up to $1,500 at Amazon, grocery stores, and restaurants. Uh, we've seen a $50 back when you make 15 purchases each month from January to March. I think the purchases need to be over $2. And we've seen 5x back on groceries up to $200 in spend. I think that was specific to the OG Freedom Card, actually. Now, if you want to see if you're eligible, there's the link to do it, um, chase.com slash mybonus. I will also put a link directly to it down below in the description. And again, you have to check by card because it's, if you look at the screen, we'll put it on, on screen really quick here. You can see you have to put in the last four digits of your card. So if you have five or six Chase cards, it definitely could be worth checking all of them. I haven't done that yet. I probably should myself, but... You know, if you do, let me know what you find or let me know what offers you're hoping to see on that. So with that, we move on to our banks being nice story. And, you know, banks have been in the news as of late, specifically Bank of America and Wells Fargo, because they're starting to do away or, or reduce some of the fees that they charge folks. So specifically, you're talking about insufficient funds fees. So if you write a check, someone goes to cash and you don't have enough money in your account, those fees looks like they are being reduced. Overdraft fees are also being reduced. Now, other banks have also been in the mix, Capital One, again, Wells Fargo, and even Chase um, for reducing other fees. Now, this story is interesting to me for a few different reasons because I title it Banks Being Nice kind of in jest. This could be a number of different, different things. Now, most notably, if you remember back in May, um, one of the Democratic senators, I think it was Elizabeth Warren, did what Democrats are known to do and went after Jamie Dimon on some kind of call to say, hey, your Chase Bank made X amount overdraft fees. This is wrong, yada, yada, yada. And then Jamie Dimon told you know her what you should tell any ridiculous Democratic statement like that of, well, no, I'm not giving the money back. Nor should he, because again, you can uh, you have to opt in or out to overdraft. You know, so I, I don't think that Chase is being a big bad bank here. But you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that banks are doing like a whole about face and trying to be our friends. I have a few different theories on this. Number one. You know, it could just be for good good press. You know, you lower these fees, right? But at the same time, you know, banks they do make it they do make a lot on overdrafts and, and insufficient funds and things like that. And it seems somewhat counterintuitive to charge people who don't have enough money more money. But you know, then they also have to collect on that money. And you're also going after people who may not actually have a lot of money. So you're spending a lot more money to get this money. It might not be as worth it as it used to be. Um, you know, and there's also the fact that even if I don't charge you a fee, if you overdraft too much, I can still actually kick you out of the bank and shut down your accounts, which could in fact be cheaper than trying to collect this money. That could be one reason. Now, another reason could also be that we've seen a lot of these neo banks and fintechs come up. Neobank is, I guess, the new buzzword we're supposed to use for a bank like a One Finance or a Spiral Bank or an Oxygen, something like that. I mean, you know, that doesn't really have a physical presence, but they're kind of more tech focused and the app focused, you know, with maybe another bank partnering with another bank kind of supporting their, their UI UX deal. Well, anyways, a lot of these guys just come out and say, well, hey, there's no fees ever on anything because banking and fees kind of scare people because people don't necessarily know how it all works. So, you know, in some degree, I think the banks is like, hey, we're now moving away from targeting, you know, millennials because the age of millennials is so long to, hey, I have to go target, was it Gen Z now? And in these neo banks seem to be much more easy to penetrate the Gen Z market. So maybe they need to soften their approach like that. But still knowing if you don't, if you bounce too many checks, I can still kick you out. So not a huge deal. Last point on this story is that there was a little note in the CNN article that Chase had even said at one point they were playing around the idea of allowing folks to get their direct deposit of paychecks up to two days sooner. Now, this is not an uncommon practice, again, in the neobank space and even in the credit union space. Credit unions will usually give it to you like on Thursday, potentially. Uh, neobanks will give it to you as early as Wednesday, I've actually seen. 
some of the bank bonuses that I've hit with these kind of tech banks. You know, again, to me, that's kind of a, a thing that all the banks could have done all along. It's not hard. Your, your employer cuts the check and sends it a few days in advance. So it's there well before Friday. The banks just post it to your account Friday at like 2 or 3 a.m. So it's doable. Again, I think this is just another another play that they can make to go start to go after the younger generation and get them in who are probably going to be much more easily courted by these neo banks. So all that to say, kind of a long story, but all that to say, we should definitely keep our eye on this. I don't think the banks are doing this just to be nice, even though I am going to agree with Diamond over Elizabeth Warren, not that either of them care about my opinion. But you know, overall, I think this could be good for everyone because competition generally makes it better for the consumer. So with that last story of the day, we've got to check in on some recent bonuses that have have changed as of late. So first things first, back to the House of Diamond. At one point, they've got to write me a sponsorship chat for this, I swear. But the Freedom and the Freedom Flex and Freedom Unlimited, those bonuses for that 5X back and up to $12,000 in spend in grocery stores, that looks to be officially retired. Now, I've heard some, some stories out there of folks saying, hey, I can still find it here and there, but it's getting few and far between. Instead, what you have on screen is Chase has replaced it with two separate bonuses. So it looks like that gas station bonus is back on the Freedom Flex. And then the Freedom Unlimited has an interesting bonus where you can get like 1.5x back on your first $20,000 in spend. I know neither one of these are necessarily bad bonuses. I don't think either one of them are as good as the grocery store bonus. I, I mentioned this because I know there were some of you guys, I think, you know, you might have been one of them if you're watching. Some folks out there who were like, hey, I'm about to be under 524 fairly soon. Um, so you're just bad. Pay attention to which bonus you're getting. Make sure it's the one you want. Chase was doing some ABC testing um, a while ago. Now, on top of that, we have the City Premier card as well. That had a record high 80,000 bonus points for about $4,000 in spend. City Premier, pretty good card. I think it's kind of hard just find your number two because you can get a lot of these other multipliers elsewhere, but specific to the bonus. It does look like that is also being retired. I've seen it might go down to 60,000 points, maybe even 50. I don't know for sure. Looks like it's still around at the time of taping. So, you know, if you want it, you might want to jump on it now. I think it's a pretty good sign up bonus there. But again, you know how city is. So last one here we have is the US Bank Altitude Connect card. Now, Altitude Connect card has been an interesting card not too bad, but you know it's not really good in year number two as you have it on screen. But they have lowered their spend requirement to two thousand dollars in spend for five hundred dollars back. And considering the annual fee is waived in year number one, I think that could make this card pretty interesting for a lot of bonus hunters out there. You know, then maybe you could downgrade it into a cash plus or something in year number two if you wanted to. But anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. So if you liked it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance. My question to you guys is let me know what you think about these banks being nice or are they being threatened by the neo banks? Where do you think I rank on my opinion on that? As well as what other stories have you seen this week that you want to chat? about love to get your thoughts on that in the comments below but anyways guys that's gonna do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you on monday